Hi and welcome to another episode of Ecom at One and today's guest is Henry Gill. Henry is the current um, head of PPC at Ecom One and SEO Traffic Lab. How are you doing Henry? Yeah really good thank you, not too bad at all. How are you? I'm very well thank you. Now I obviously know Henry for those that don't know, I know Henry very well because he is the head of the agency um, in the paid ads department um, and works on both sides of the agencies you know on the Ecom One side and on the SEO Traffic Lab side so I know Henry's got some amazing insights and sort of career history to share with everybody that's listening in, um, sort of along the paid ad side and sort of your career to date. So how's, how's things going? Yeah, really good. Yes, yeah, as, as you say, I've had a kind of interesting career path in some respects because I kind of started out um, initially when I went to university studying a history degree. So I did a, a three-year history degree and, and I absolutely loved it at the time. And then I went on to do a, a history MA as well. So yeah. At, the, at the time, I was actually thinking of potentially becoming a history academic. So I did this, um, this yeah. master's course. Uh, and then I was, I was actually kind of during the, during the master's course, actually, I kind of found out that uh, I might actually want to do something, something a bit different. Um, and yeah, during, during the course itself, I found it was uh, very little kind of contact time. I was spending all my time in the, either kind of in the library at home. It wasn't very kind of social. And I kind of decided I wanted to have a, have a job, have um, work in a way that would be, you know, kind of with other people, much more collaborative rather than yeah. being, being quite isolated. Um, so, yeah, I kind of uh, then went on, actually. I didn't go into marketing straight away. I then went um, and thought about trying to become a lawyer. So I went, um, I did a, uh, what's called a conversion course, law conversion course. Yes. Yeah. So a bit more time at university. Uh, yeah. And then I spent some time uh, paralegaling as well. And it was, uh, yeah, it was actually while I was paralegaling. Um, one of my responsibilities alongside doing the, the legal work was doing some of the marketing. Uh, and actually find I absolutely love the marketing and not so much the, the legal side of things. So a lot of, <laughs> a lot of the, uh... yeah, I think, yeah, that's an interesting one, isn't it? I think um, we're sort of, um, you know, society wise and, and sort of, the, you know, we sort of generally, you know, our sort of paths are very um, quite often sort of family of do, do a certain thing a certain way. So we're brought up to do a certain thing. So I know it's very similar, you know, so you sort of went to uni, started in history, then went to law, then ended up doing marketing sort of thing. And so <laughs> yeah. obviously through that time, you know, it was, it was all about the history, 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 master's degree, isn't it? In history. Yeah. Master's then, history. That's right. Then law, you know, so it's like eight, hey, what's that? Six, six years at uni, is it pretty much somewhere there? Yeah. yeah I did my, I did my MO kind of, um, semi kind of part time as well. So it's kind of five years doing history yeah. <laughs> and then like two, I spent yeah two years at university doing yeah. law. So I did the um, GDL and I was working at the LPC as well. Yes. And then in between there, I did a, a year when I was doing paralegaling at a, a law firm in Bristol. Yeah. So um, yeah, and I kind of I kind of yeah realised while I was doing the paralegaling, even though it wasn't kind of the most kind of glamorous work, I kind of thought it was yeah I enjoyed that a lot more than the, the recent work I time yeah, at university. Yeah. Did you have a bit of a tussle then? At that point, you'd gone there to do law. Obviously, you then got a paralegaling job. But obviously, marketing. But yeah. you, you're like, oh my god, you know, you know, I can't tell anybody that I actually don't want to do do, do <laughs> law anymore. I'm going to do marketing. Was it a bit of a bit of a sort of strange week or month or six months yeah, or whatever? Like, you know, like, yeah, absolutely. Jump, am I going to jump ship or not? You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I think at those I came across. A, I think I did a blog at the time actually, which kind of resonated me with this thing called the the fallacy of sunk costs. So I kind of as as you say, kind of I spent a lot of time and. A lot of expense, obviously, going to yeah. studying law. Um, I'd, you know, I've got a lot of work experience. I hadn't just done the kind of the three years. I was doing uh, loads of experience, work experience as well, and things at, at different law firms. Um, so I was pretty knowledgeable about kind of the law at that time, and it would have been the the obvious thing to do in some respects. But yeah, um, I think yeah, I think ultimately I was, I was, I was kind of um, I was actually the the stage where I was applying for legal jobs and kind of filling in these. Uh, kind of endless application forms and I uh, catch all the kind of the see the question kind of why do you want to do why do you want to be a lawyer I was like actually I'd much it's prefer to do this other kind of small sub yeah. my kind of <laughs> my side project at, uh, at the law firm I was working at so yeah it was, I, I think it was just for me it was just so much more creative yeah um doing doing the kind of the marketing stuff and I was just kind of doing quite low level things really like running the running the twitter account and um organizing events oh, and then I was cool. actually doing a bit of design and some signage and things as well but yeah I just, yeah, I got a real kind of buzz out of doing that. Um, I was quite lucky, actually. They gave me quite a lot of scope to do what I wanted to and kind of put my mark on the, on the yeah. marketing there yeah, as well. They gave, at the a, I was working they gave you a taste of what is possible out there. And then obviously you went all in with the marketing role. So now fast forward, what, four years now, I think, isn't it? Fast forward yeah, four, yeah. four years-ish. Yeah. yeah, tell us about um, sort of what you're doing now in terms of in the company. Yes, yeah. So I now head up the, as I said, I head up the, the PPC department. 
Um, so I kind of, um, yeah, got a, a team there, probably, f I suppose, four to five people, kind of depending how you look at it, working on the, in the, in the, on the PPC side with a kind of technical side. Yeah. And then with on our own marketing as well, there are a lot of people um, who are working on the kind of the paid elements of that. Yeah, yeah so heading, heading up the PPC side where we look at uh, Google ads um, is a really big focus of mine particularly. Um, also Facebook ads. Yeah. Um, we do a bit of uh, Bing as well. Some... Uh, work on on LinkedIn ads as well. So I mean, a lot of different areas, a lot of different channels that we we look at. But um, for me, my kind of a, a huge amount of my focus is on on the Google side, particularly in um, Google Shopping, uh, especially. So you've got an array of clients there. Obviously, I know this, but for the benefit of the yeah. listeners, you've got an array of clients from ranging from a I think companies selling toilets to companies selling. You know, give, give us a bit of an insight into some of the things that you're some of the brat or some of the sort of types of products that you're representing and and selling for clients. Yeah, so we, we do work in a lot of different uh, verticals, a lot of different uh, industries. Um, uh, a lot of what we do is, of, of course, e-commerce. So uh, companies selling products online. And um, as you say, we've got everything from kind of toilets. We work with um, a company who sells quite high volumes of safes, quite expensive safes. Um, companies sell outdoor wear. Um, companies selling... Uh, Velux windows, frozen fish. Uh, there's, a, there's a huge kind of, yeah, a big, really big range clothing. There's, yeah, a lo I think, uh, yeah, loads of, uh, yeah, probably tens of different uh, verticals that we do work in, really. Um, jewelry as well. Yeah, lots of different um, so interesting kind of sectors. Ple ple plethora, I can't say that word, plethora of <laughs> industries. And obviously, I know more, more, than, more than anyone, really, the, the real depth of you know, that, that you do work on, your team works on. Um, now, obviously, you talked about, you know, the, the different um, platforms in effect, you know, Google, Facebook, and obviously Google, you've got different types of ads, display, search, shopping, you know, where, which sort of, um, what, which channels and which um, of those advertising types do you find the best results? Yeah, it does depend quite a bit on the client. So I think one of the, the key things to think about in um, working with PPC is that a lot of it uh, you work in in terms of a market. So effect, a lot of the time, the, the, the price you pay for a click um, is very much dependent on what your next competitor uh, is willing to pay. So if you want to be at the very top of Google, for instance, the very top of the search results, um, your bid might be, say, uh, a pound. But then if, they, if your competitor below you, uh, says they only want to pay, you know, kind of 10p, you'll pay just above them. So you just pay 11p to be in that uh, very top uh, position. Yeah. Um, but then if you've got a competitor who's um, much more aggressive in their bidding and you want to be above them, they might um, they might themselves bid a pound and then you have to bid one pound, one p. So there's um, one of the things that I can remember, uh, just when I was getting into a market, I was into a lot of um, Gary Vaynerchuk and he was saying, what is the underpriced attention? And that's a, a big important thing to, to take into consideration. So for some clients, they will see a, um, underpriced attention on, on Facebook, whereas it, in other clients, it might be on Google. Um, so kind of Google shopping might be a kind of work really well or might be Google search. Uh, but in, in general, I'd say for e-commerce clients, the real kind of no-brainer um, is to set up, set up sorry, um, Google shopping yeah. um, as, as a kind of a first uh, port of call. Good to hear. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, alongside that, would really highly recommend also setting up Facebook ads uh, and particularly dynamic um, mm -hmm. Facebook ads. So that's um, having those those two. They work really well together. Actually, my, myself and um, my colleague Ben, we did a uh, a talk a while ago called on the um, I think it was called the digital power couple of kind of combining Facebook and and Google ads. So yeah, they they definitely do work well together. Um, I think if you're just starting out with an e-commerce store. Uh, I think a, a really powerful thing to do would be uh, Google, Google Shoppings, first of all. Yeah. Um, if you, and although, in fact, if you've, got a, if you've got a really small budget, you could probably see very strong results um, going to, to Facebook, Facebook remarketing. remarketing. Uh, so. So, so Google Shopping as a start point, expand on that, um, but also um, try and tie that in with Google, uh, sorry, Facebook ads and the remarketing side. So interesting today, I mean, today, last night, I think, well, I know Mark Zuckerberg announced um, a new feature within Facebook. I don't know all the details. It's literally, um, you know, I think 20, literally 24 hours ago it was announced. Um, obviously, we're in lockdown. We're, in, we're on day, I've lost track, but 65 or something like that, maybe 60-ish. Yeah. I think we're nine weeks in, aren't we, as a company? That's it. In lockdown. And obviously, we'd seen, we've seen some crazy sort of movements, ups and downs, a lot of ups, a few downs, you know, in different verticals. 
you know, e-commerce has become this this new <laughs> this new thing. But obviously, not not to us and those that are already using it. But a lot of industries, it's like right, we're really into this e-commerce thing. And Facebook announced yesterday that they're doing their own e-commerce integrations from within the platform. Is there anything yes. you can say? On, is there anything you can say on that at this stage? Or not? I know it's very new and it's literally you know, probably five working hours ago it was announced. Is there anything there that's quite exciting that you're aware yeah, of? Yeah, it's, it's definitely exciting. I mean, yeah, Facebook, um, you can really see that being incredibly powerful and being a massive rival to some of the other uh, e-commerce channels, I suppose. So I think it could it set out, it could really rival potentially Amazon if they if they pull it off well. I mean, as you say, it's very early days at the moment. They've, they've literally just announced it. Um, but from what we can see on on the kind of Facebook side of things, if with the right targeting, you can get fantastic results. I think if people start using um, kind of Facebook and, and the store side of things, then I, I can see it really, really yeah. taking off. Because I think, like you say, you, with Facebook, you've got this real standout platform for targeting, I think. Is That's the, it. Well, it is a fact. But now, but getting products in front of those um, those people has always been, I think, maybe a little bit of a technical problem for you know those that aren't working with agencies and things like that. I mean, even when they are, you know, DPAs, dynamic product ads, is is always the way to go to get products in. But obviously, this new layer, this new shop, obviously, we don't know too much yet. But there's um, a few things I've read that it ties in with a different platform. So you know, we're seeing this massive growth in Shopify as a brand. I think they've given six months free free trials. I think it's till the end of October. Um, I think their share, share their share value, which is quite an indicator, I think, in sort of um, obviously customer behaviour and, and brand equity and sort of value in what people you know are, are using and spending money with um, or are going to spend money with. I think more so Shopify giving six months. Um, free so in six months those however many millions because it will be in the millions that, that have taken up a free shop and then then now we'll have the ability to integrate that shop with Facebook very quickly very easily you know or I think yeah you can sort of see like two two new not new but two other power couple a, a new power yes couple, yeah yeah Shopify and Facebook together taking on Amazon I mean that's a hell of a fight and there's just yeah you know crazy crazy sort of um, Goliath battle going on but yeah on the e-commerce stage so it really spotlights e-com doesn't it that you know mark zuckerberg went live yesterday with it it's, it's um you know definitely one to watch it certainly does i think i think it, in a way it will tie up a lot of things together as well very nicely so i think if you're um a brand and you've got a, a facebook page then you can immediately kind of target your ads or, or even kind of organically just really kind of tell your story set out what's uh, you know kind of makes you unique uh put on special offers on Facebook and that's very visible. You can just get in front of people who are really enthusiastic about your kind of your, your product or your brand or service. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then with that, it's probably as well with, um, it would be very, could be very, very straightforward for them to people to make a purchase on, on Facebook itself, for instance, uh, everyone's kind of logged into Facebook all the, all the time. I know I am. Um, yeah. And I you can just the, see it being so frictionless yeah, in terms of someone seeing, um, a single piece of content, then maybe an ad next to it, and then they could just yeah. one click. I'm a, I, this is how I think it's going. Yes, people make a purchase. So I can see the conversion rates being fantastic and cost per acquisitions being really low, which obviously kind of a marketer's dream and a, yeah. a retailer's dream. I think that's where Amazon have got that. You know, Amazon are just ingrained in all of our lives. That's a bit of an extreme statement, but you just you're almost. Um, you know, it's part of my, right, I want to buy something, blah, 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 you know what, I, I mean, it's every day Amazon is coming to yeah. most people's houses, I guess, but definitely when, you know, we're buying stuff for our team every day and from, for, our, for our own business and the house and the kids are here and whatnot, and, you know, you just go on one click, done, you know, and, and, and even if it, even if you don't do the one click, it's only like three clicks, you know, you've already yeah, got your credit cards loaded and your, or your credit card loaded and your address is loaded. Um, and I think that's that, you know, that frictionless that you talk about, you know, Facebook do that, you know, you're on the feed, you see the product, the one click, two click, obviously we're not quite, I'm not quite sure. I don't know if you are, but no, sure. it's it's like, like, what, what that's going to look like, but that's going to be the key, isn't it? That speed, that frictionless, that ease, you know, where you, you probably preload your cards in somewhere in Facebook, you know, to buy, buy that, buy that, buy that. Crikey, and he went on Facebook to have a look at <laughs> yeah. what my mates did last weekend and I've just bought, you know. It's a bit dangerous, got you. Yeah, which, definitely. But on Amazon, and you know what, I mean, we're both very similar when it comes to reading and books and, you know, books, we're both crazy for learnings and whatnot. You know, we just buy, buy, buy this, that and the other sort of thing. Well, it's going <laughs> to, we're going to need, we're going to need, uh, 
you know, an extra however many hundreds of pounds a month now to, for the for the Facebook um, brainwashing that's coming. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> okay, so, so you can just hear quite you someone just like kind of on podcast or kind of. Uh, introducing the podcast um or like a video podcast or whatever and then say, oh yeah and this is my latest book and just one click and then you can yeah. post it on facebook so you do that kind of match up between the content um kind of valuable content like video content and yeah. information and then making a purchase um yeah. that could actually in some respects put them ahead of the game um yeah. with amazon so on, on amazon there's not really i mean it's such a very small experiment there's not really that kind of go there to consume interesting content you is you kind of go there to, to make a purchase but yeah, it's very yeah it's very yeah really you're there to buy aren't you rather than learn or educate yeah okay well we'll come back to shopping we'll come back to some strategies um shortly but um so i think um you know listening to you know as you know you know we've dealt with you know hundreds and hundreds of clients over the years you know and, and still do um and i think um what normally we see as an agency from a you know from a, a agency owner perspective is that you know the the clients that that are doing well and the clients that engage an agency you know they see the real value in having an agency and quite often that boils down to the fact that there's that much within the interface that much within adwords that much within facebook you know and of, of course within a you know within maybe three months you can become pretty good at ads but the reality is things are changing all the time you know literally yesterday facebook's now announced xyz so there's a whole other revenue stream waiting there to be you know to explode you know lots of announcements around google shopping this last week or two which we'll, we'll dive into so what would you say you know how do you feel that pay-per-click is changing what's some of the main areas for the big development the exciting areas that you see at the moment in the next sort of year year or so yeah, there, there are a lot of things going on. I think Google um, in particular is quite keen to, to push on the uh, AI, AI side uh, yeah. particularly. Um, so one of, one of the kind of the tussles we sometimes have on the, on the Google side is the, the extent to which um, AI, you know, kind of the effect at which a, a manager or um, an individual can influence it. Yeah. But it can actually have some really positive as well. And it, um, rather than there's, there's uh, smart shopping, which is a really something Google being pushing pretty hard uh, where effectively uh, Google have all the control and you, and you can't really make any uh, adjustments other than kind of switching a certain product on or off, which, which can work fairly, fairly well to some extent, but um, things which Google are doing at the moment, kind of using their AI are things like responsive search ads, which we've seen uh, surprisingly good results for. I mean, I think it was about two years ago, it wasn't for it working very well till when we first started testing it. And then in the last kind of six months, it's really taken off. Um, so, and the, what responsive search ads are is you, uh, rather than a traditional um, ad group where you um, supply, create, for instance, three different ads, best practice usually to, get, to create three ads within an ad group, all of which have a combination of headlines and descriptions. Yeah. Uh, you supply a lot of different headlines and descriptions and Google rotate them around and find the best combinations. Yeah. Uh, and initially when we, we tried this, we found it was dreadful. So it was kind of um, at a very high cost we got pretty good click-through rates, um, but that wasn't much good because the, the conversion value wasn't there, the all-important return ad spend wasn't, wasn't yeah. there really. Uh, but in, in recent months, they've kind of uh, developed that and you can do things like, um, you can say, okay, well, certain, you can always pin the, the top headline, for instance, if you want to, and then everything else in the ad can rotate. So yeah. a lot of, there are a lot more options there. Um, and then, so that's, that's, that's really useful. Uh, and yeah, a lot of the other AI is worth worth dipping into, definitely worth testing. And I think that's going to only improve over time. Well, I know, uh, um, on, on that topic, I know uh, obviously yourself and the agency are a huge fan of using automations and scripts. Yeah, absolutely. It would be good to give an example of say, you know, let's say, you know, I'm an e-commerce store um, owner. Um, I've got 20,000 SKUs, you know, pretty common. Um, I've got products ranging from, you know, five pounds to five grand. Um, I've got stock coming in, stock coming out every day. Some products are in in stock. Some products are out of stock. Lots of variables is what I'm driving at. Sure, which, yeah. Which, in reality, I think makes to to be able to run that campaign optimally. Yeah. With a you know completely with a human and an account manager. Yeah, sure. You know that's obviously really challenging. Um, but with scripts, I know you guys have, have developed, um, or we, you know, we've developed, you've developed um, some 
incredible scripts that can do literally thousands of um, actions in an account in, a, in an hour even where obviously usually yeah. in a, over a day you know a thousand plus changes in a day is, is very common yeah. what sort of things you know can you do with scripts what sort of things just to give the listeners an insight into the sort of things as an e-commerce store that, that can be done yeah i think probably one of my favorite things to do well i'll, I'll touch on two things one of, one of my favorite things to do is um adjust the, the bidding with the scripts. So a lot of uh, the success of a PPC campaign, particularly on the, um, on Google shopping uh, comes down to, are you paying, are you bidding the right amount for a certain product to appear in the listings? So you'll really have to take into consideration the, the conversion rate of the product and the average conversion value of that product as well. Um, so if your, your bid's too high, you might be getting loads of clicks, loads of volume, loads of conversion value, but it might be very unprofitable. Yeah. So one of the ways that, one of the scripts that we've developed um, is a way of making uh, quite small incremental changes because kind of a couple of pence up and down um, depending on the return on ad spend, the, the ROAS of a product and its conversion value um, over both a 30 day period and a 60 day period. So it has to satisfy the, the criteria that we deem successful, for instance, uh, to make a bid increase over both of those uh, time periods. Um, and that's, um, be very, very time consuming to do for these accounts where we've got um, thousands of, in some instances, tens of thousands of products. So you can make these, these little adjustments where we're seeing particularly good results. So one of the, one of the scripts that we have, for instance, uh, was okay, well, look at all these uh, products which have performed really well over 10 and 30 days. So they might be doing uh, at twice our targets. Uh, and provided that our search impression share is a certain level, they might increase the bids by 1p or 2p. So it's very, very small adjustments, but if we're yeah. running those multiple times, a couple of times yeah. a week, for instance, then they can kind of start to yeah. start to stack up. And then yeah. as soon as stop the products that are doing well, and then you do a reductions on the products that are doing poorly, potentially. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely right. So yeah, you, you really want to kind of control the, the, the kind of two areas that you really want to have a lot of focus on are they, um, the products and uh, keywords as well, where you're, you're spending a lot uh, but not getting a return. And the other side, of course, is where you're uh, getting a fantastic return. Um, but you might have a quite a small search impression share. For instance, you just really try and push that product a lot further up until the point where it's... Um, I have to admit, it's one of those that if, you, if you're not familiar with scripts and what they can do, I think you know a lot of people, the sort of untrained eye or the one, the people that are used to doing it the old way, I think, you know, this is when you're sort of embracing change, embracing, you know, the new developments in any industry. Yeah, you know, the, the reality is with that script, if you've got twenty thousand SKUs, you know some are doing really well, some are doing really bad. That is the reality of life, you know. And, and somewhere in the middle, you know, what you're reporting on usually is a ROAS for everything. But the reality is, you've got a ROAS here, ROAS, you know, all these ROASs. Well, if you were just adjust, adjust, you can take that average ROAS of everything to such a better level. So you know, you're yep. really, you know, you're really exploiting the winners in effect and you know and really hammering down the losers or you know or the where the yeah, sure. biggest um opportunities are and obviously there's opportunities everywhere you know but be able to do that manually you know with all the will in the world you know you might start off well you know as a dedicated account manager a dedicated the guy looking after the adwords etc but the reality is you know life gets in the way whatever you know the things you have to do in the account you just can't make those you know tens of thousands of changes in a monthly basis so what would be another good script then that you would um recommend? yeah yeah i mean i just just sort of got to finish off on that on that point actually um what i find really handy as well is that on a in an account for instance if you've got ten thousand different SKUs where you're making adjustments uh, it is very appropriate, I think, to really hone in and make manual adjustments for the the really the, the very top performers. So your you know your kind of best sellers, uh, monitor those very very carefully, um, make bespoke kind of adjustments for them manually um, yeah. potentially. But then you've got, you've got this kind of a lot of this middle ground um, stuff, middle kind of mid performers, and yeah. now I think that's where automation is really handy, where it just it makes the right um, kind of adjustment. So you, you leave yourself a pretty a big lever. Yeah, yeah, you leave a it's quite important to leave quite a big margin of safety. So if, if a, a, you know, if a product does fairly well, you don't want to necessarily ramp up the bids massively or it's doing a little bit below average, you don't want to really decrease it, but making small adjustments there um, can save a lot of time. So you can have a lot more kind of thinking time to make the right adjustments and do the kind of creative work, creating yeah. better ad copy um, for the, the really high, high performers, for instance. Good. Yeah. Great. So any, yeah. so to me, Sorry. What would be one more um, script that you would um, sort of think about is um, you know right up there in your top three? So this script's reasonably 
complex. Uh, so this, this is all to do with keyword sculpting. Um, yeah. So this is with shopping campaigns. Yeah. Um, with a shopping campaign, unlike a search campaign, you can't bid on specific keywords uh, to trigger ads. So for instance, if you were selling um, barbecues, uh, you'd have a, a product feed um, and then it would have a kind of a description of the product and have um, various fields um, filled out. And then your ad would um, trigger because Google think, thinks it's a good, for a certain keyword, because Google thinks it's a, a good match to the, the data uh, in your feed. Yeah. So in that example, um, you might find that you have a, um, for instance, you might have a, a search term which is very specific um, and does really well, has a really high conversion rate. Um, so for instance, a, a Toronto grill, extra large barbecue. Yeah. It's a very specific term. Someone who's searched for that obviously knows what they're uh, looking for. Uh, and the chance of them making a purchase from that long tail search term is very high. So keyword sculpting is really a way of making sure that we segregate the really high performing uh, search terms on shopping um, from the kind of generic low performance because officially you can't do that. You can't um, bid on a, on a keyword in the same way that you can with a search campaign. So what this uh, script allows you to do is, uh, first of all, uh, we have a script which segregates uh, automatically campaigns into high, medium and low priority. Yep. Uh, and that affects where the um, search term will cause the ad to trigger. And effectively what you're doing uh, is blocking off keywords, um, which are really high performers. So they stop filtering into your low bid campaign and they can only filter uh, into a medium or high priority campaign where the um, bids, are, bids are quite a lot higher. So high priority in terms of um, our own, kind of how, how we would class it. So yeah, so you might, so for Toronto, um, a grill, for instance, you, you could then have a, a bit of a pound, whereas for barbecue itself, a very kind of generic term, you might just want a kind of a bit of, of 10p or so. Yeah, yeah. So one of the, so the, the script um, that we use automatically creates those different segregations. That would take hundreds of hours to do that for um, yeah. lots of different products. Uh, and then the second thing it does, it would automatically exclude the best performing uh, keywords. So they end up filtering into this uh, campaign. Where we've got much higher bids. And so we're just bidding at a really high level on these superstar keywords yeah, and not for the, yeah. not for the brands, generic. brand terms, longer terms, exactly. product, product names, brands, product um, part numbers, that type of thing. Yeah, exactly. So the, the, the script again would um, have a look at the, the performance of the um, search term and it would, it would have to make some pretty stringent criteria for it to be in this, um, this campaign where we're being this really large amounts of money comparative terms to yeah. the, the generic campaign. Yeah. Okay. So um, that gives you the um, capacity to, rather than with search, what we're saying is with search ads, you can bid on a keyword with Google shopping. You can't technically bid on a keyword. Yeah, well, that's right. um, you can't sort of say, I will bid 10 pounds on this X, Y, Z grill. But yeah. by herding keywords in blocking them here, blocking them here and pushing them into this campaign, you can then treat them differently and bid on them differently or stop them in this campaign and bid on them differently. So what well, that enabled what you're saying? Yeah, fantastic. Obviously I know very well that it works exceptionally well because it's not one of our sort of um, almost patented, it's not, but it's, uh, you know, it's quite, it's quite a well-known strategy that we've um, massaged it probably to the eighth degree over the years. And it's, it's one that we know, you know, it, it's very transformative, isn't it? Because you, you're able to really get very granular on specific products rather than treating the word barbecue the same as xyz extra large silver barbecue rather than bidding a pound on each we know that the five word product product search term part number size color search term is going to perform a lot better yeah so scripts massive advocate of scripts um so moving on from scripts what would you say excluding scripts what's working well right now you know right now these e-com guys are listening in um, they're deciding what to do, um, you know, with budgets and, and sort of campaigns or maybe getting started, you know, on a, a certain platform. What's working now? What are you seeing through the, you know, through the, the many accounts that you oversee or manage yourself? What are you seeing that's working very well? I mean, I said on, on a macro level, e-commerce is actually doing, has been doing very well over the last kind of few months. So we're, we're seeing a, a real spike in demand. So clicks are um, massively up, conversions up as well. And a lot of instances, conversion rates are up, and, and that all important uh, return ad spend is 
uh, doing well as well for a lot of our clients. Um, and I think a, a lot of the reason for that, of course, is a lot of the, the retail stores are shut um, and a lot of people who previously would have gone out and made a purchase in a shop are now going online. So it's, yeah, it's a, it's a real opportunity. If you do sell products to, and you haven't um, looked into advertising before, I'd say definitely uh, have a look at that. Um, and it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah, definitely an opportunity there. Um, so a lot of industries now like, are doing obviously very well, but there's, yep. obviously there, there's the area, there's certain industries we know that are, are really struggling, you know, tourism, you know, hotel, etc., travel, the e-com where you can physically buy. A lot of industries are doing very well. So, you know, the guys that are maybe either thinking of starting, it's a very good time to start, I think is what you're saying. And obviously the ones that are already in the trenches really look at the data to understand where you know because i think the reality is that the, the some of the row asses that we're seeing you're seeing uh so sort of, oh, i hate to use the the word unprecedented um but some unprecedented i know just before the call we you were talking about uh, a, a client that's doing facebook getting 40 or 39 times return i think it was yeah so. that's it yeah we had a, a conversation as well with a client um yesterday who had a whole month's worth of their revenue which they had in a single week as well so there's a lot of people seeing these kind of yeah results that they would have see, be seeing around kind of usually around Christmas time in terms of yeah. demand um, that that's that kind of uptake in orders um, uptake in traffic as well so yeah there's um there is opportunity there on on e-commerce uh, definitely and then specifically I think as well they're one of the campaigns that we're looking at um, which we're seeing very good results for so far we just just kind of um started with it really on with video ads yeah um is we're getting exceptionally low cost per views um on youtube so it's one of the kind of very rare numbers of campaigns where you can get a kind of a, a cost per view um of under 1p so it's kind of unprecedented really in in that sense um on the on the google so it's still very early days with that one yet um so far and we're always quite um dubious about uh, certain kind of display campaigns in particular we found in the past that although you get a lot of a huge number of views potentially that doesn't necessarily translate into sales but um certainly we're, we're pretty excited to see where where this leads um especially because we've seen the the combination of on facebook of having uh videos uh, and then the the option to make a purchase um in some called a collection ads where you, you kind of have the, the video and then you can directly going and click the, the products underneath it and go through the website yeah. that works exceptionally well so it's, it's early days with youtube but um yes yeah, yeah. seeing very very low cost um yeah. per click and low cost per, so, per I, think, I think it's always i hate to sort of you know it's a, it's a great time for paid ads and i think you know it genuinely is you know that is what you're you're saying and it is you know but obviously it doesn't mean that everybody every business is gonna and i think that's where you've got to be clear obviously if you're in a you, yeah the, the data tells the story doesn't it you know and, and you've got to look at the facts and figures and numbers nobody can go in and spend thousands tens of thousands and not get a return especially now yeah absolutely so you know i think it's a good time to be testing you know yeah. and, and, you know and trying because the the, the roas really is in, in a lot of e-commerce is, is unbelievable at the moment um obviously some industries you know that may be 20 30 percent it's hard you know we could we could determine um, pull a stat in from, you know, from Google and whatnot, but, you know, 23% of industries, but e-com specifically, which is pod, they, pod, this podcast is obviously about, you know, most of those, you know, we've got clients in the fish industry and in the food industry and in the drinks industry, you know, in the barbecue industry and in the clothing industry and in the outdoor clothing, you know, bikes, you know, um, fitness, you know, all blowing up, isn't it? You know, so. Yeah. It's, it's one of the, one of the kind of interesting uh, within that kind of data, you say there's that that kind of general trajectory. What's also happening? It seems to, seems to be happening a lot, a lot of our uh, across a lot of our different accounts. Is they were getting a lot more orders for the lower value items as well. So I think these would potentially be products that people would be originally kind of, might have originally thought of buying from a store. Yeah. Um, but we've seen a real spike in or a real yeah a lot, a lot of the case the the average order value has actually decreased. Uh, but we're just getting loads of many many more conversions and a high conversion rate as well. So that's that's interesting. Um, I think as a result of even kind of coming out of COVID, so, you know, we obviously hope as soon as possible, the, um, the restrictions kind of ease and get back to, back to normal. I think there will be a change in buying habits. Uh, I think that's always certainly going to happen when people realize it's, it is very easy to perhaps if people haven't been purchasing before online, they realize it's actually very straightforward to do so. I, that's um, what I, I, a bit I agree. I think, you know, we're, you know, the, when the day comes and we're, 
say back to normal because I don't think that day is ever going to happen. But you know, in terms, you know, everything, you know, the, the world has changed, and it's not going to, you know, there'll be a new normal. Um, um, but the reality is, you know, you might not have ordered your smoked salmon online. Obviously, people do. You've now tried that, and now when you're thinking about buying smoked salmon, you know, go, well, do you know that guy we bought it off the fishman.com or whatever it is. You know, do you know what? I'm just going to order it off him again. It was great. You know, so you, you've all, you've been forced to try these different websites. You know, but now you, you know, you've no doubt had a good experience nine nine times out of ten. You know, nine and a half times out of ten. So why would you not go back and just you know the and, and buy from those sites again? You know, so I think what a great time for e-commerce stores to go and win that business. Okay, you're getting that sale. You're doing well now. You're getting that sale. You know, you've got this three six month big purge and you know big 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 um spike but then you're also buying you know you're buying your customers right now as well you know you're building that that brand you're building you know that customer database that like most things not every product but you go and rebuy stuff don't you if you're buying fish you don't just eat a bit you know obviously you go back every three months and um you know get your 50 60 100 quids worth of fish for the freezer or whatever it depending on you know yeah absolutely yeah, so yeah, we do. I mean, we absolutely see that a lot of the the customers um, and speaking to our, our clients as well. A lot of them are very, very much kind of repeat customers, and yeah. initially getting that kind of initial um, order through, which can often come through a you know kind of paid advertising, for instance, yeah. uh, can be extremely valuable. Looking at the kind of the, the lifetime value of that customer, yeah. as you said, particularly for products which you um, buy on buy on repeat. So I've got clients who sell, um, for instance, pet medication, uh, and that can be really yeah. worthwhile once you kind of get that initial sale in that month in yeah. month out. Anybody um, knows people kind of get a, a repeating order. Consistent, isn't it? I get every however many months you're buying your flea treatments and your you know it's just a regular thing, isn't it? Once you've bought that customer once, yeah, you you've got them for maybe the like you know, the twenty years, fifteen, ten years life lifespan of a pet, yeah. Okay, so, um, so much good stuff. So in terms of like, we've got people listening in that will be managing their accounts themselves. We've got people that will be um, working with agencies like ourselves. Um, but what would you say, what are some recommendations around account management? What are some of the routines, some of the things that are so important to managing an account well? Yeah, so one of, one of my favorites, um, Ever kind of principles and something I kind of repeat ad nauseum. Everyone gets completely sick of me banging on about it. Is uh, the eighty twenty principle? Um, so this is essentially um, saying that you know, kind of a, a minority of inputs often uh, can cause uh, the effect of uh, kind of changing a, a, the majority of outputs. So essentially, twenty percent of your actions will give you eighty percent of the the results. Um, so this is this is this was a kind of real uh, game changer when I um, first heard about this, um, and I think I think it was initially Tim Tim Ferriss where I kind of discovered it from. But then I've subsequently it's one of these things where you kind of um, I kind of see it all over the place. A lot of people reference it, and it's yeah, it's, it's been incredibly useful. Um, and it's often the case of the count you might have ten thousand SKUs, you might have um, five hundred campaigns. Uh, but just by getting the the settings, everything right on uh, maybe three campaigns, um, you can actually um, you know bring in kind of fifty percent of the the benefit. Yeah. So one of the, one of the things about the eighty twenty principle um, is that it's fractal, which essentially means that the top twenty uh, percent of the top twenty percent of your actions will give you um, the top eighty percent of the top eighty percent of the results. So a lot of the times it's just really kind of focusing on thinking, okay, rather than trying to change five hundred different things um, in this two hours I've got to manage this account today. Yeah. Um, can I actually? It would actually I'd get better results if I could think, you know, kind of five really kind of key things uh, to change. Um, so a quick, quick fire around then. Yep. What's the three things that everybody listening should look at? So number one, I would say. So this is actually. Um, I kind of referenced it in the book actually, which I uh, wrote on this, or kind of long pad that I wrote on this on the subject is looking at devices. Um, so this is essentially kind of bidding differently depending on um, whether your ads appearing on computer um, or it's appearing on mobile or tablet. So generally speaking, um, with uh, mobile devices, you get a lot of search volume there, um, and you, get, you can also get a lot of uh, conversion value there as well, a lot of clicks. But then the conversion rates can be quite poor, uh, and if you don't change the um, device adjustment, so which often means having a negative 
uh, bit of adjustment. You can be uh, burning a lot of money and just not actually getting any profit from it at all. So um, yeah, just by decreasing in 90% of cases, decreasing the bit adjustments on mobile, or at least having a look at how mobile is performing, you can really revolutionize the performance of the account. So that's, that'd be my number one recommendation. Number one, look at mobile, number one, look at your mobile, look at the attribution to mobile and um, go in there probably quite aggressive is what we're saying. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, follow the data for sure. But I mean, generally with your, if you're comparing the performance, um, you can actually do this in the overview screen of, of Google ads. So you can, you can see it straight away. Um, so if you look at conversion value divided by cost, that's the, uh, we find the best measure of profitability. And you'll often find that it's substantially lower on mobile because you're getting a lot of clicks and it's very expensive, but your yeah. cost per click is too high. So having a, a negative bid modifier there. Um, so in a lot of, a lot of account, it, it depends on how good your, your sort of mobile experience is, of course, as well. But often um, you're really, 90% of the cases where we go in and the account's not being optimized, you're paying far too much for mobile conversions. So a big decrease there can um, so that's the literally literally change that, the, the, the first account. thing you look at then when you're looking at an ad account, you'll go straight to the um, adjustment, you'll go to the mobile, click on mobile, yep. see if there's any adjustments, no adjustments, it's like, right, we can save these guys 20% of ad spend. Yeah, absolutely. Um, often more than that, you can kind of save them quite a, quite a bit more than that as well. And then, um, yeah, potentially with a... Um, in comparative terms, having a higher bid on computer as well, your, where conversion rates are much better, you can uh, scale your uh, conversion value too. Brilliant. So what will be the next one? What will be the next sort of 80, 20, 80, 20, 20, the, the real, what, what will be the next one that you would go to after the mobile? I had, I'd actually break it down and look at the individual product performance. So the, the key thing to do there is have a um, use filters yep. in the account. So if you go to the product group level, you can actually see the level at which you're bidding. Um, so a lot of, a lot of accounts actually we see the, um, people have just this, the same bid for every single product, which is, uh, that's, that can, that's a real indication that we can improve things. <laughs> so yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's not a very good way of setting it up in 99.99% um, of cases. So yeah, have a look at the, have a look at the product group level. Um, and then you want to add a filter. So you, you want to work out what your, a good return ad spend would be for your account, how profitable your account needs to be for it to um, kind of work for you. Yeah. So, yeah, so if your ROAS target is 10 return ads, but 10, sorry, return on ad spend target is 10, uh, you want to add a filter. So show me everything below that filter by cost. And then you can very, very quickly see where you're spending far too much money. Um, it's a real, real hidden gem, isn't it? In there, I think yeah. um, so simple when you know where it is and, you know, um, how to maneuver them. And so we're looking at, we go to filters on the product level. And we then look at, you know, return on ad spend and obviously anything under whatever your return, your ideal return or your, or your break even or the, the level. If you work into 10, we try to work for 10, to 10, don't we, as an agency. Obviously, it varies on industry. But um, so you go to 10, anything under five is obviously a big problem. So you're going to do some big adjustments there is what you're saying. Anything over 10 is a big opportunity. So yeah, straight away. So yes. that's I'm, 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 I've been interrupting you there. I do apologize. No problem. I'm going to go straight into the third one. What would you say sure. is the third one? Third quick one. Uh, yeah, the third one I'd say is remarketing. So yeah. remarketing is actually something which is actually quite overlooked, I would say, uh, with yeah. the shopping uh, and search as well. So a lot of people, when they think of remarketing, they think of a um, annoying banner which follows them around the, yeah. um, around the internet. So they're on a kind of a news site. This is kind of big pop-up um, and they you know, don't want to click on it. And they do click on it. It's often by accident because of the fact they've... Um, I think someone described it as kind of having like fat thumbs where you kind of accidentally click on these remarketing banners, which they, they don't want to see. So um, that's, that's uh, display remarketing. Um, and it can be effective if in kind of certain, certain, certain circumstances. Uh, but what we're really talking about um, here is remarketing lists for search ads and remarketing for shopping itself. Yeah. And what this does is it puts um, anyone who's been on your website, uh, into a bucket. So a, a very simple um, set of remarketing uh, adjustments you can make uh, based on um, how uh, much time someone's been on your site. So you can say everyone who's been um, on my site, who's been on for five minutes, uh, they're put in um, bucket A and everyone who's um, been on the site and they've been there for half an hour or more, we can put on, on category B for instance. Yeah. Um, and then uh, people who have spent more time on your site, they're more likely to be interested 
yeah. uh, and then you can put a adjustment um, on the search ad itself or on the shopping cam ad or campaign itself. Yeah. So some, when someone types in a term which could uh, trigger your products, they're much more likely to see them in a, in a prominent yeah. position. Yeah. And what we what we see nowadays is that um, the the path links, so the the number of times that someone visits your website before making a purchase, is pretty high. So in a lot of cases, uh, people are before making a purchase, they revisit your website four or five times. Uh, and then off, or they'll obviously be, um, in a lot of cases, comparing other websites as well. Yeah. So to, um, it's, so it's, a quite, it's a quite simple thing to do to make, to just add these remarketing adjustments uh, to your shopping campaigns or to your search campaigns. Yeah. Um, and that just means your ads are going to be much more visible when people are searching again. Uh, as you say, people. One of the trends we're seeing is, yeah, as, as we said, touched on. Uh, people are looking at a lot of different websites now before making a purchase, yeah. um, kind of comparing prices and whatnot. So, yeah, so really okay. key. So we've got three very quick wins there. We're looking at the mobile. We're looking at the devices. We're looking at product level, ROAS using the filters, and then we're looking at remarketing on um, product level. You know, on on so Google Shopping remarketing as opposed to display remarketing, which people get very confused with. Very very different. I'm sort of not talking about banner ads and banner remarketing that follow us around and bother us. We're talking about, I went and looked at this barbecue two days ago and I, I put it in the basket. I didn't buy the barbecue, but now that actual barbecue, the actual barbecue is following me around. And as an AdWords advertiser, I'm bidding more strategically on trying to attract me back because I showed a real interest in that barbecue because I put it in the checkout. Yeah. So and you can just see straight away, you know, that, somebody's looked at somebody's been in your shop already they've had a good look around and then you're bringing them back to the shop you know and they are they're seeing that thing that they spent half an hour looking at or they're seeing that thing they spent five minutes looking at the person that spent half an hour looking at it you're bidding more you're bidding more strategically yeah Brilliant. that's a really good point you touched on there about the abandoned checkouts so that's actually the very very best um audience remarketing uh, that you can add in uh, on google uh, or on facebook so touch on facebook as well but yeah, so if someone's been all the way to the checkout and they abandon it, uh, and that can be that can be very very high levels. So it can be kind of sixty, seventy percent or more of people yeah. who get all the way to the checkout and then they end up not purchasing. Life gets in the way, or um, yeah. they decide, oh, actually, I don't have enough money in the account, or whatever it might be. Um, yeah, if you at, at that point, if you get those people uh, and you set a really high remarketing adjustment for them on the search and shopping campaigns, that's very powerful. Yeah. Um, and then just briefly touching on on Facebook. Uh, that's the very best audience that we found uh, on Facebook. So we actually find that, um, I know it's kind of been saying that banner ads don't work very well on Google. Uh, the equivalent on Facebook is a completely different story where the, uh, the uh, kind of the ads are much more native to the, the platform. They're not seen as yeah. a kind of a, a spam or an intrusion. They're seen as kind of past the, the platform in a lot of cases. Yeah. Um, and they are ex like, astonishingly effective if you're uh, remarketing uh, using dynamic product ads which means that if someone's been set looking at a certain set of products, they'll then see that set of products uh, on Facebook in an ad. Yeah. Yeah. Very, right. very high conversion rates and kind of um, the return ad spends you'll see there is going to be very, very high, significantly higher in a lot of cases on, on, on Google. Yeah. Yeah. So, cause you're targeting such a narrow audience with that, the, you know, you're not necessarily going to see the massive conversion value, which you might see in throughout your entire Google ads account. But with so, that narrow audience with the really specific products, you'll see a, a yeah. great, um, so, a great return on yeah, spend. Great rice. So Google Shopping. Um, so it's been around, I think, um, about 16, eight, say 16, 18 years. And I remember it back then. Um, I was, you know, a, a retail or an e-tailer back then, you know, prior to the agency. Um, you know, I, I was selling online for 10 years and it was called Frugal. It was free. You know, you would, you would upload it. You would upload your list, you know, your CSV or whatever, a text file push your products into Google, you're on page one of Google in half an hour or 24 hours. Sounds like some sort of um, dodgy sort of marketing speak, but that was the reality. You would upload your list, frugal, it was free. Obviously Google went to a paid um, model um, or eight years ago, I think maybe. Um, I'm maybe slightly out with my time. It's about eight years ago, they went to the Google paid on the, on the shopping was called product listing ads and then you know PLAs as people know it then it was known as Google shopping now really it's known as shopping ads that's the the official term from Google shopping ads and shopping ads massive explosion you know in terms of and growth in shopping ads you know huge you know the CSS which we probably won't go into today 
um, but you know you, you're able to you know there's been a real investment from Google um, you know and a massive growth for e-commerce a real 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 strength you know Google and something we built a whole agency around but this last um, I think three weeks ago there was a huge announcement from Google that they're bringing frugal back now that's a quite a bold <laughs> statement to make that's the sort of headline but what's all that about? You know, they're, they, they're saying that now it's free. You know, there's, there's rumors of it's been free. And obviously, there's quite a lot more to that. So can you explain to the listeners, you know, what, what's happening there with the, the sort of the, the new free Google shopping ads? Yeah, so this was something apparently Google had in the, the pipeline for some time, but then they decided to uh, accelerate it in light of the kind of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, and what this essentially is, is there'll be free listings, um, but only within the Google Shopping tab itself. So that's, I think that's a really important distinction to make. Um, so one of Google, when you search, they're not there, they're when you click the tab within the first page, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So within within the, the Shopping tab itself, and I think a lot of people are thinking it's going to be uh, one of the reasons, or the probably quite a few reasons why Google do this, is to try and rival Amazon. So kind of the, the Amazon uh, marketplace where there's, have the organic product listings as well as as well as the paid for um so yeah this this is really very significant news um it's probably looking at look at the headline kind of free google shopping um listings it's it's um you're probably not going to see the massive volumes that you would do if you were kind of appearing on page one of google for you uh, at the moment in a, in a shopping listing uh, but it's still absolutely really worth paying attention to and, and having a look at yeah. Um, so yeah, the, the, the way that you opt into that is actually pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, you just have need to have a feed running. You don't need to have any shopping ads or any kind of PPC running at all. You just need to have a, a feed, uh, which is uploaded to merchant center. Yeah. And then you need to, uh, enable, uh, that feed through, uh, something called opting into surfaces. Yeah. Uh, and then your ads can start appearing, um, in the, and that's currently live in the U S so we've, we've, um, have a, a client who's uh, has got their um, shopping ads paused at the moment uh, in the US, but they're starting to get impressions again uh, and clicks on their listings, which is great. So kind of, yeah, free, free traffic there. So it's, it's, you know, it's kind of, it's growing as well, actually. It's interesting kind of day on day, which is, which is great what, to see. What's so the, um, what's the understanding of when it'll be available in the UK? Yeah. So I, um, I heard on a uh, webinar, which was given by one of the, the heads of uh, the UK e-commerce that they're looking at uh, introducing it in a third quarter uh, of this year. So still not very specific on the timing yet, but it, it should definitely be this year from what he was saying. Maybe five, six months. We, we should five, six months. UK, yeah. yeah. So it's definitely Again, not about, it's not, it's not a, um, you know, it's not a, just a rumor. It's a fact. You obviously we are seeing it in accounts, US accounts. Yeah. Um, you know, and we're seeing it enable, we're seeing click throughs and impressions and click throughs and whatnot, obviously small volumes. Um, uh, yeah, it'd be very interesting to see how it all progresses really and, and what they, what happens with the Google shopping tab as well. So at the moment it's probably under 20% of people actually click onto the, the Google shopping tab. A lot of the, the searches for the, um, are just kind of made in the, on the main homepage, but it's going to be interesting to see how that develops. And I think Google have given a bit of a sneak uh, peak to, to kind of show that so a lot more organic listings um, yeah, I think for... that is, uh, it's, it's a great opportunity obviously you're going to get a you know it's not like you're, you're not paying for these ads if you were paying you get you know maybe a hundred times more clicks or whatever the but the reality is you can now list your products in Google for free but you're not you're not you know you're not on the high street you're down a back you're on a you know a side street but you're still going to get people coming by you are still going to get clicks so yeah, so that's a really the, good analogy. Those, yeah, those those that are um, you know thinking of dipping their toe in, in shopping, you know, then what a great time to do it. You know, we're three yeah. or four months away, maybe from anybody in the UK that's listening, particularly, um, where you could get those feeds in place. Um, you could get those products, you know, all sorted on your website, so everything's looking great. And then when it rolls around, you know, you've got the tech, you've, you've hooked up to your merchant centre, you've got your products showing, you know, when because literally an email is going to come through. Anybody listening? that's got an AdWords account, an email is going to hit you at a point and you'll go, oh, you can be on there. And then you'll go, how do I do that? You know, obviously you can then sort it out or you can, you know, you can get geared up now. So you hook up your merchant center, enable services. Um, um, but obviously they won't show um, yet um, until they, the account has been enabled and you will get an email because we've been having them through for the US clients. Um, you'll get an email and obviously it'll be it'll be it'll probably be news to you like it's news to us that day when we all oh, they've started to come through and then everyone will be scrambling 
Um, but you'll be able to try, you know, for free Google Shopping, you know, and you'll get, you know, maybe uh, we don't know the, the percentage, but you're going to get a percentage of what you're going to get a taste, you know, of that high street store on the on the first yeah. page of Google, aren't you? Which is it's so exciting, I think. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I think it'd be great for people as well. I mean, I, th- I think that'd be a real first mover advantage if you kind of get on there um, early and then you can, if you're completely new to it, you can, you know, trial out optimizing, for instance, your product feed, making sh- kind of testing different uh, descriptions to go alongside different headlines to go alongside um, your products as well and just kind of get a feel for what works uh, completely cost free. And then if you do decide to kind of branch into to paid shopping, yeah. um, all those kind of those learnings will be very, very useful. And I think you've then you're winning in that you've got that technical piece set up. Obviously, there'll be you know, there's a lot of recommendations we would make as an agency to really hone that feed. You know, feed is a whole other webinar, which sure. we'll probably do with our head of feeds um, and technical um, Andy. But um, but um, you're you know you're over the line. You're, you're live. You get a taste, and then you could go. Do you know what? Let's let's we're, we're we're making something out of this. Let's just commit to you know a starting budget because we've already had a taste. So great, great times. So um, last question, Henry. Okay. So I always like to end on a book recommendation for our listeners. What's the, what's the one book you would recommend to our listeners? Uh, one book which I kind of revisit quite a lot and kind of like to dip into is by Tim Ferriss uh, called Tools of Titans. Uh, and it's, yeah, it's a, it's a very thick uh, book. It's maybe kind of 500, 600 pages or something like that. Um, but it's, smoke, it's broken up to lots of small chunks where um, Tim Ferriss interviews lots of different uh, world-class performers, um, people like kind of Arnold Schwarzenegger, um, uh, uh, the lady who's from the Huffington Post, uh, Ariana Huffington, I think her name is, yeah. um, uh, Jocko Wilnick, and lots of other kind of uh, really impressive public figures, celebrities, uh, businessmen, um, world-class kind of sports performers. And just ask them all about their kind of their, their habits, their routines, uh, what they accredit their success to, things that they've yeah. learned from. Um, yeah. One of the interesting things I think was from that book was he kind of asked them what's a really bad piece of advice you're, you've been given, which I thought was quite an interesting question. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really interesting. And it's what I quite like to do is kind of dip into lots of um, different people's recommendations. Yeah. It could be a really good jumping off point. So I actually yeah. um, ended up listening to the um, audio book um, written by Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, which was fantastic. I really enjoyed that. Uh-huh. We called a Total Recall, which I was kind of introduced to. Um, found all sorts of things that you know, he was actually kind of a, a businessman as well as a, a weightlifter. He was actually a, yeah. a millionaire, for instance, before he made his first film, which I thought was quite interesting. Yeah, so, yeah. Other things oh, there. Right. But, right. Well, I'll have to yeah, get that so. on the list. So, for the guys that are listening in that want to find out more about um, you know shopping or more you know and, c- and connect with you and and you know paid ads, Facebook ads, shopping ads, Google ads, etc., and obviously just generally to connect with you. What's the best place to connect with you, Henry? Uh, the best place I would say is uh, LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you can, you can find me on there um, as well as our website yeah. um, as well. So um, getting Sorry. back into the, the blogging again, so I'm publishing quite a few, I uh, put a blog out yesterday actually um, on the, the free Google shopping um, yeah. listings. Um, and then, yeah, but also through email as well, henry at econ1.com. Yeah. So that might be there. Econ1, LinkedIn, we'll find you on there. And obviously on our company website, econ1.com. Well, thank you very much for being on the podcast. It's been a pleasure. Oh, that's great. Enjoy that. Thank you. Thank you.